Oh, I don't remember what the name of uh, my lecture <laughs> was, but uh, I can tell you the name of the lecture today, which is, uh, so, so I'm supposed to uh, introduce uh, uh, sufficiently, uh, sufficient material for, uh, to explain what the uh, uh, minimal model program is, okay? And so it has actually little to do with model I, except th there is at, at some point a model I space, okay? But apart from that, it's, um, it's uh, a bit uh, disjoint from uh, the other topics. So the, uh, what I want to cover today is uh, some basic stuff about divisors. So most of uh, what I'm going to say today is actually contained in uh, Hartshorn's book. The, there are, uh, there are uh, notes for my lectures. <coughs> on the web, I think on the, uh, on the conference page, but also on my uh, personal web page. Okay. So uh, let me begin. Uh, so <coughs> I will begin by uh, defining Veil and Cartier divisor. So uh, uh, probably a lot of you already know uh, what uh, this is, but uh, anyway, I'll go through the uh, definitions. So let's say that X is an uh, integral scheme. Actually, integral is not necessary for the definitions, but it makes them easy easier. At the same time, it's, uh, it's not so good to make this definition. You want to be able to define these notions in general. But uh, uh, just for, uh, for simplicity, I will assume X to be integral. So a veil divisor is just a formal linear combination. of a uh, formal uh, linear combination like this, where I, uh, Y, sorry, runs, uh, it's a finite sum, and Y runs through the uh, prime uh, hypersurfaces, meaning integral hypersurfaces uh, in X. Integral hypersurfaces in X. Okay, and so classically the, uh, the coefficients here were supposed to be uh, integers, and, uh, but uh, we're gonna have to use uh, Q divisors, so this is the same definition, same definition except that you allow the NY to be in Q. Okay, so the veil divisors form a group. It's actually the uh, three abelian group on uh, the set of all hypersurfaces in X. And so why uh, do people care about divisors? Well, the main reason is that, uh, so assume that X is normal, and uh, assume that you have a rational function on X, okay? So uh, every time you have a integral hypersurface, y in x, it, is, uh, it corresponds to, um, uh, so if you look at the uh, local ring of x at the uh, generic point of y, this is a discrete valuation ring because it's a regular ring of dimension one. And so uh, the notation is uh, the valuation of f at y is this, so this defines uh, this number. So this is a uh, integral integer. Okay, so Vy is the uh, discrete valuation attached to this uh, local ring. Okay, so we can define the divisor of, of F as this sum here. Okay, so in some sense, this is the order of vanishing of F along Y, if F is regular along Y, or this is the order of the pole. Okay, and uh, since X is normal, F is regular if and only if uh, it has, uh, ah, okay, I forgot to, uh, okay, so if and only if all these valuations, uh, sorry, here I forgot why, all these valuations are non-negative. And so this is the definition which I forgot to say here that uh, we say that this divisor is effective if all these numbers are non-negative. Okay, so, so a divisor usually is denoted by D, 
and we say that D is effective, written like this, if and only if all the, these numbers are non-negative. Okay? So a function is regular if and only if uh, its divisor is effective, so I can uh, write it like this. Okay, so uh, another uh, definition is that we say that uh, D and D prime, two veiled divisors, are linearly equivalent. So let me write it uh, like this because uh, along the years the, uh, the definition has changed. I mean, when I was a student, this was linear equivalence, but now people tell me it's numerical equivalence, okay? So just let me, uh, just me, let me write it like this, okay? So linear. And miracle, we'll see that later. Okay. Uh, oh, I forgot to say here that f is supposed to be non-zero, of course. And so this is a definition. Uh, two veil divisors are linearly equivalent if their difference is the divisor of some function. So we said that uh, their difference is principal. Okay, so what else? Uh, so then, this uh, linear equivalence is compatible with the uh, group structure. So we obtain a, a, a group structure on the set of equivalence classes of veil divisors, which is written as uh, CL of X. So linear equivalence classes of veil divisors. Okay, uh, so the next important notion is that of a Cartier divisors. So these are these were VL divisors, and now Cartier divisors. So a Cartier divisor is a divisor which can be uh, so a Cartier divisor. Is a divisor. which is locally principal. Okay. So it means that you can, uh, so you can see it as a veil divisor uh, with the condition that X is covered by open uh, subsets on which uh, the divisor is the divisor of a function like this, okay? There's another way, a uh, more formal way to write it, where you act actually forget about <coughs> the divisor as a veil divisor, and you just write it as a collection. So this is also, this is a collection of pairs ui fi, where uh, fi is a, uh, a function on um, sorry. Uh, function on UI or actually so that this is the same as uh, regular uh, non-zero and you want to have uh, some compatibility so you want that on on uh, the intersection on any intersection like this the quotient of the two function is a regular function which uh, vanishes nowhere so I can write it like this, O uh, invertible okay. So this is a section of the sheaf of uh, uh, non-vanishing uh, non functions <coughs> on this open set. Okay. So if you remember what the definition of a, of a quotient sheaf is, this is the same, so this is a formal definition, a Cartier divisor so this was sort of a uh, provisional definition, and a Cartier divisor in general is defined is a section, is a global section of the sheaf, a quotient sheaf. So K of X underlined <coughs> means that it's the constant sheaf uh, of a function with values in this group here, 
divided by Ox star. Uh, so my star and then my, okay? So you can view a Cartier divisor like this. And then given a Cartier, so this is the definition which, which is nice because it, it works, uh, it works um, uh, in general. Once you have a definition like this, you'll go back to the Cartier divisor by saying that, uh, so given such a divisor, one defines a veil divisor like this, integral, okay, where uh, ny is just the valuation along y of this function fi for any i such that uh, ui meets y. So given a Cartier divisor, you can associate a, a veil divisor, but uh, as you know, you cannot uh, always uh, go back. Not all veil, veil divisors are Cartier divisors. Uh, there's, there are cases where uh, this is true. So when x is locally factorial, so meaning that all its local rings are um, uh, what do you call uh, UFDs, u uh, unique factor factorization domains, then uh, any real divisor is Cartier. Basically, this amounts to saying that uh, whenever you have a integral hypersurface y in x, then it is given locally by one equation. Okay? And this is true on this type of variety because uh, if you have a, so this corresponds to <coughs> the ideal of y in x is, an, um, is a prime ideal of height one, and in a UFD, these ideals are principal. Okay? So locally, you can always write uh, y, so let's say the trace of uh, y <coughs> on uh, a sufficiently small uh, open set is the divisor, is a, uh, a divisor is given by one equation, okay? So once you can, we can do it for, no for one prime hypersurface, you can do it for all veil divisors. So a particular case of this is when uh, x is smooth, of course. Okay, and uh, so w w going back to Q divisors, it will also be useful to talk about Q Cartier Q divisors. So this is not very nice, but uh, so what is a Q Cartier Q divisor? So let, let's say that you have a, a Mm, let me, uh, actually, uh, no, let, let me, let me, uh, let's go back to Q divisors. Sorry, I, I erase this. <coughs> so now I take a Q divisor, so it's a linear combination with with uh, rational coefficients of uh, integral hypersurfaces in X. So some multiple of this guy will be uh, veil divisors, okay? So all the coefficients will be integers. We say that this divisor is Q Cartier. If some multiple is a Cartier divisor. let's say for m non-zero, is Cartier. Okay, so the... 
Now here I'm, 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 I'm looking at any, uh, okay, so let, yeah, uh, let me, uh, so a priori this is just a Q divisor. So here I'm, I'm, I'm uh, of course, assuming that is a Cartier integral divisor. So in particular, you want M to be such that M and Y is an integer for all Y, okay? So you ask, oh, so, so if I forget about this, then this will always be true, but I want this multiple to be a Cartier divisor. So let me uh, give you an example, very easy example. Uh, let me look at the uh, quadrate cone. So defined in the uh, affine three space by the equation x, y equal z, uh, z squared. So you get something like this. And I take a line contained in, uh, in this cone. So I take for the line L, the line defined by the equation x equals z equals zero. So the, the line itself is a uh, integral hypersurface in the surface X. So it is a uh, veil divisor. <coughs> but it is, not, uh, it is not Cartier, okay? So I won't uh, prove it. It is not Cartier. Because it's ideal in uh, the ring of X is not locally at the vertex of the cone is not uh, defined by one equation. But if you look at 2L, <coughs> then 2L is Cartier. Okay, so 2L is, is defined by uh, the one equation uh, x equals zero. Okay. So geometrically it means that if you cut x with a plane which is tangent to the cone along L, it will give you, the intersection will be twice L. Okay. So the vanishing of this uh, regular function on x it vanishes at L with mul multiplicity two. Okay. So you s you we can say that L is Q Cartier. Okay, so this is, uh, so don't, don't hesitate to uh, ask questions if you're, some things that are not clear. There is some condition <coughs> to all the divisors, all key divisors be Cartier? It's, uh, yeah, you can ask, this is the condition, you just spelled it out, okay? But you don't say Q locally factorial, I don't think. I don't think it's used. <laughs> but you could say that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, another side of uh, actually the same story is uh, invertible sheaf. So let's say that was one. So the definition of an invertible sheaf on a scheme X, an invertible sheaf is a locally free sheaf, locally free sheaf of rank one. Okay, so this is the definition. Why are they called invertible? Well, it's because uh, these sheaves form a group for the tensor product. So you can, if you have two of them, L and M, you can take the tensor product. And for, so this is a group operation, <coughs> group structure on the set of all invertible sheaves. And uh, the inverse, so it each invertible sheaf has an inverse, uh, which is its dual, okay? So the inverse <coughs> is a dual. Okay, 
you can also, there's a, a sheaf theoretic uh, a check homology, I mean, check description of uh, these invertible sheaves. So, uh, locally free of rank one means <coughs> that there is an open covering, so there is an open covering, an open covering of X. So by open sets, UI such that uh, on each UI, the, uh, the sheaf L is uh, trivial, okay? So on UI, this is isomorphic to O U I. Okay? And uh, so this, here there's an isomorphism. And uh, if you're given such a uh, family of isomorphisms, you can compare them on the intersections. And you find that the, uh, so you have two isomorphisms like that. They're, they differ by multiplication by your unit. Okay? So this gives you, GI, GIJ, which are sections of uh, invertible sections, invertible functions on UI, UI um, intersected with UJ, and they satisfy the cos uh, cycle condition. Okay, so by check homology, this gives you an element of H1 so it defines an element of H1 of this sheaf here. Okay. And uh, if you work out the definitions, I mean, I'm already doing a lot of this here, so maybe I, I won't do it here. What you find is that the, this, uh, the group of uh, invertible sheaves on X, modulo isomorphisms, is actually isomorphic to this group, okay? So this is called the Picard group of X. So pick of X, which is by definition uh, invertible sheaves on X, uh, modulo isomorphisms, <coughs> is isomorphic to uh, this group here. So this is a uh, very important uh, invariant of the scheme X. Okay, so now let me make the link between these uh, um, divisors and invertible sheaves. So assume that you have X, uh, uh, sorry, D, a Cartier divisor. on X. So given according to the formal definition by a family of uh, pairs, UI, FI, okay, where FI is a rational, non-zero rational function of UI and the UI uh, cover X. You may look inside, um, so let me, uh, you have to be careful not to get the, the signs right. Uh, we construct an invertible sheaf, okay, so we define So the traditional notation is uh, OX of D inside this constant sheaf here. So X is, uh, is integral from the beginning, remember? This is the kind of place where it, it simplifies things. We define it on UI as the OUI uh, module generated by one of F over FI. So you check that these definitions are compatible and they define it is an invertible sheaf. <coughs> on X. And uh, with our assumption that X is integral, uh, actually every uh, in uh, invertible sheaf on X is obtained like this. 
So it gives you another way to uh, describe these uh, invertible sheaves. And uh, so what is the group structure? The group structure uh, is uh, they actually agree. So whenever you have two divisors, uh, the tensor product of their associated invertible sheaves is correspond to the sum of the Cartier divisors. And uh, lastly, the, uh, the last thing we need is that this invertible sheaf <coughs> is trivial. Forgot to mention that the uh, neutral element for the group structure is Ox itself. So Ox of D is trivial, meaning that it's isomorphic to Ox if and only if D is principal. Yes? No, here no, no. I mean, the whole thing works without this hypothesis. It's just that uh, it's, it's a little bit more complicated to, to define this. It's simpler this way. So if you put everything together, what do we have? We have here uh, the Picard group of X, which is a... Um, the group of uh, invertible sheaves moduli isomorphisms. And here we have a, uh, the group of Cartier divisors. Okay. You have a map that takes D to OX of D. I mentioned that this map was subjective. It's a group homomorphism, and its kernel consists exactly of uh, principal divisors. So what you get is an isomorphism of groups between Cartier divisors, modulo uh, linear equivalence with the Picard group of X. And if you like uh, cohomology of sheaves, you can actually find this uh, homomorphisms as the co-boundary co of the long exact sequence in cohomology associated with this short exact sequence here. So here is the quotient sheaf. Uh, maybe one would be better than zero. So uh, remember H0 here was the group of Cartier divisors. The H0 here, the image of the H0 of this guy here, which is just K of X, in here corresponds to uh, principal divisors. And the co-boundary uh, gets you into H1 of X or X star. And this is this map here. Okay. This is, it's very easy. It's really the definition of this map. OK. And uh, so now I will not uh, uh, define cohomology of, of sheaves. I assume that you know what it is. I already, I already uh, uh, used it. And so uh, there, there's also a very nice description uh, of the a group of sections of OX of D. Okay, so these are, uh, this is the group of global sections of uh, this uh, invertible sheaf, and this is isomorphic to, uh, so this is a subgroup of uh, K of X, and it's the set of uh, functions which are e either zero, or non-zero, and then such that uh, the divisor of f plus d is non-negative, is effective. Okay. So this is the kind of thing, uh, I don't know, you don't need to know that uh, by heart, but it's nice to, uh, to see it. <coughs> uh, okay, so le let me give uh, an example, because this is a lot of theory and uh, not uh, many examples. Mm -hmm. 
So let me take the example of uh, the protective space, Pn over field K. Okay, so uh, hypersurfaces in Pn are globally defined by one homogeneous equation. Okay, are all okay. This is for the same reason as I explained before in a different uh, in a, a different situation. It's, it's <coughs> this is because the ring of uh, uh, polynomials. If you look at the inverse image of the uh, hypersurface in the affine space, then it will be be a codimension one uh, thing, and uh, of uh, so corresponding to an ideal of height one. And again, since the polynomial ring uh, with coefficients on a field is a UFD, then uh, it is generated by one equation. Okay, so this is for uh, the uh, divisor side. I should mention that this is uh, smooth, so there is no difference between Veil and Cartier divisor. And uh, so in particular, mm, so every uh, hypersurface here is defined by uh, one equation, which has a certain degree. So to <coughs> any y, you can associate uh, the degree, let's say, f. Okay, Fy, uh, the degree of Fy. <coughs> okay, so this gives you a, a group homomorphism uh, between the group of Cartier divisors on the uh, in Pn and Z. Okay, Cartier divisor. This is the degree homomorphism. I claim that it factors through uh, uh, a linear equivalence. This is because, so what is a, uh, a principal Cartier divisor? It's given uh, by the uh, divisor of a uh, rational function on the protective space. But a rational function on the protective space is given by as the quotient of two homogeneous polynomials of the same degree. <coughs> so the degree of the divisor of a rational function is zero. So this degree factors here <coughs> through linear equivalence, okay? Because the degree of the divisor of a function f over g, so <coughs> f and g here are homogeneous polynomials of the same degree, is zero. Okay? So according to uh, our isomorphism here, this, is, this tells you that the Picard group of Pn is isomorphic to z. So on the side of, uh, of divisors, this uh, a generator, as a generator, you can take a hypersurface of degree one, which is a hyperplane. Okay. So a generator. So you can, uh, okay, a generator. is, uh, let's say, hyperplane. You could take also minus a hyperplane, but it's uh, usually uh, people take, uh, you take the, the positive guy to be a generator. On the uh, invertible sheaf side, we get what we called, with, uh, we get an invertible sheaf, which we denoted like this, and the uh, more standard definition is uh, OP of one. So you can take that, that as a definition. And then uh, you get all the multiples, which are the higher uh, tensor power of this guy with itself, corresponding to various hypersurfaces of, uh, of various degrees. Let me mention an important fact is that, uh, uh, so let, let, me, let me write it in a more uh, intrinsic way. Uh, assume this protective space is a protective, 
pr productivization of a vector space uh, W. Okay. Then uh, there are uh, canonical isomorphisms like this, so claim, which I won't prove. So whenever d is a non-negative integer, the space of glob uh, global sections of this guy to the tensor power d. <coughs> so O of d, remember, uh, I mean, I mentioned it, I didn't write it. O of d is uh, O of 1 to the power tensor power d. This is canonically isomorphic to symmetric power uh, sim d of w dual. Okay, so this is a k vector space, and uh, when d is negative, this there are no no global sections. Okay. No questions? Okay, you can keep going. Okay, so <coughs> now I want to uh, describe briefly a, a very important uh, operation, which is a pullback. So assume that you have a morphism uh, pi between schemes, uh, which I will assume to be integral because I developed the theory. But this is not necessary. So assume that you have a divisor D on Y, Cartier divisor. Then you want to define the pullback. So the, uh, the best case is uh, when, I mean, you have a problem when the image of uh, x is contained in d, <coughs> basically. Okay? And uh, so if this does not happen, then uh, you can define the pullback. So we def if, if, let's say, uh, no component how did, how did I write it? Um. Okay, if the support, I, I forgot to define this, but it's, I think it's pretty clear. If the support of D does not contain the image, so this is nice because uh, everything is integral here. Sorry, uh, thank you. Pi of X. Then we can define pi per star of d as a Cartier divisor. Okay, so uh, how do we do this? Well, d is given by a, a family of uh, ui fi, where fi is a non zero rational function of ui. And uh, so the fact that so the support of D I forgot to uh, mention is, uh, so if you consider D as a veil divisor, the support is the union of all hypersurfaces for which the coefficient is non-zero. Support of this guy here is the union of all Y for, for which, I don't know how to write, like in Y is non-zero. So if D is given by this, then pi per star of D is just given by uh, pi inverse of ui, fi composed with pi. Okay. And this will be non-zero exactly because of this uh, condition. Okay. If 
this condition is not realized, then you, you cannot define this div the pullback divisor like this, but you can always define the pullback of the associated invertible sheaf. You can always define as an invertible sheaf. Okay. So in other words, you can always define the pullback of a Cartier divisor up to linear equivalence. Okay. So this is a, a very important. So now, uh, I want to define a very important uh, operation between uh, curves and divisors. So intersec intersection of curves and divisors. So, um, so first of all, what is a curve? I think we already uh, saw that in uh, in uh, our pre our pre the previous talks, and. Uh, so first of all, mm, let for, for me a curve will be is a one-dimensional often I will assume that it is smooth actually. It's usually not a good idea to make too, uh, too much assumption and just a name, but uh, smooth and projective. Variety. So variety means a scheme of finite type, um, integral scheme of a finite type over a field. So everything here is over a field. Okay. So first of all, uh, so I'm, I'm assuming the curve is smooth. So there is no difference <coughs> between Veil and Cartier divisors. What is a divisor on a curve? Well, uh, it's uh, explained uh, very simply if we assume that K is algebraically closed, which I'll do here, although uh, this is not strictly necessary, then a divisor is just a formal linear combination of integral subvarieties of codimension one, which are just points, okay, close points. So uh, a divisor on a curve just look like this, okay? Finite sum uh, where P runs among the uh, close points of C. In case the, the field is not algebraically closed, you have to be a little bit more careful. Uh, no, actually, you have to, to, to be more careful when you define what I'm going to define here, which is the, the degree. This definition actually, this is just, I'm just uh, rewriting the definition of veil divisor. You, you don't need to assume that uh, the field is algebraically closed, but for the degree, so definition, so this is a, a veil divisor. The degree of D, so K here algebraically closed. The degree of D is by definition <coughs> the sum of these uh, integers here. It's, uh, it's also useful to remark that this, so I uh, <coughs> forgot to mention something. Assume now that D is effective. This is a, a remark that I should have made earlier. If you have an uh, effective Cartier divisor, you can also consider it as a subscheme of X. Okay. So uh, let me explain it in this case here. Uh, it can be considered as a subscheme of X. Uh, 
so the support of the scheme will be just the set of points where this number NP is non-zero and at P, such that NP is non-zero, so in other words, positive, since we assume that they're all non-negative, uh, D is defined, this subscheme, which is still usually written as D, is the subscheme defined by the uh, nth power of the maximal ideal. Okay. So you have your curfew and you have a certain uh, finite number of points which have a certain multiplicity. Okay. And uh, so it looks a little bit like uh, what I did for the projective space. It's a bit more complicated to prove. So it's a fact, it's actually proved in uh, Hartshorn that the degree of a uh, principal divisor is zero. Okay, so theorem. Whenever you have a rational function of x on x, the degree in that sense here of uh, in that sense here, of a, the divisor is zero. Ah, sorry, I forgot. Why, why did I discuss this here? I just wanted to remark that the degree of D, this, this is going to be useful. It's just the dimension of the space of global sections <coughs> of OD. This is just uh, um, D viewed as a subscheme of X. It's just uh, 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 a fine subscheme, just uh, support a finite number of points. And at each point, the, uh, the multiplicity is uh, NP. Okay? So uh, the dimension of the space of sections of OD is just the, there's NP sections at each point P. Okay? Okay, so uh, going back to this uh, important theorem here, it uh, so it gives you that there is a map, the degree map uh, factor through uh, linear equivalence and gives you, so hence there is a group homomorphism <coughs> from the Picard group of X to Z which is the degree. Okay, it's usually not an isomorphism. Uh, it is when uh, x is p1, and it's the same as the one before. OK, so now. Uh, uh, the discussion of curves ends here. I want to go back to uh, a general variety X. If you want to, are there any questions? Is this definition the, the good definition for the non algebraic space? No, no, no. Uh, I mean, yes. I mean, it, but the problem here is that this only works when D is effective. Because uh, when D is not effective, you cannot consider it as a subscheme. Okay. You cannot separate it. Separate you can write D as a difference between two uh -huh. effective uh, divisors, and then for each divisor, each effective divisor, you can write this. Yeah. I mean, in in the non-algebraically closed field here, uh, I, I mean, the the only difference is that here you need to multiply by the degree of the residue field <laughs> over K. It's not, it's not a big difference, but... Um. Okay, so let's say that X is a variety, and uh, so I'll, it, it will be convenient for us to define a curve on X. It's convenient sometimes, but not other times, but uh, let, let's try it. A curve on X is a morphism. Uh, 
Okay. So here I see the curve in a sense that I define over there. So in particular, it is smooth and projective. So it, it is sort of a generalization of what you would think as a, a curve on a variety. Uh, it, it's not restrictive because whenever you have a curve, even singular, you can always consider its normalization and get a morphism like this. I'm not as assuming that this morphism is uh, even by rational onto its image. Okay. Just a morphism like this. So it might be, uh, so you, ha you have your curve C here and uh, you might have a very complicated curve inside X. So, so now I'll take a Cartier divisor on X. So I define the intersection number, so I usually I put the divisor first. So this is a definition. This is the degree of uh, rho upper star of D. Okay. So everything has been defined here. D is a Cartier divisor on X. This is the pullback, so it's not well defined as a Cartier divisor, but it's well defined uh, modal linear equivalence. So I can take the degree, okay, the degree, uh, this one, the degree of a divisor of a, on a curve, okay. So this is called the intersection number of uh, the divisor uh, D with C. And uh, what does it uh, compute? Well, it computes what you want to compute. It sh if you have a, uh, let's say you have a, a divisor. So let's say that the, uh, the world is our, our variety X, dimension three, and this is a divisor, D. And you have a curve and uh, okay, and it cuts uh, maybe uh, maybe this tangent sometimes. So this is my curve C. This is all inside uh, X. And how do I compute? So this is the case where C is not contained in the support of D. So this is the case where uh, it's e this number is easy to calculate because uh, in this case, rho upper star of D is actually has a, a canonical representative, okay? which is given, so let's say that I have a model of my curve here. So I have uh, four intersection points, one, here one which counts double, this is supposed to be a tangent, and one. Okay? So this is rho. This divisor is rho upper star of D, okay? And the degree is four. So in, in the case where uh, the curve C is not contained in the support of D, this actually computes the number of intersection points of C and D with multiplicities, okay? But you see that the definition is very simple. I mean, of course, we have uh, used this ingredient here that we haven't proved. But otherwise, it doesn't require a lot of, uh, a lot of technology. Okay, and uh, so now the next definition. I should I should include the uh, row in here, okay? But otherwise, the uh, the projection formula is sort of built in the definition, okay? Yeah, I'm sort of uh, hiding this. So, uh, an important notion, uh, an important definition. We say that uh, d and d prime Cartier divisors on X. are numerically equivalent and we write it like this 
if they have same intersection numbers with every curve on X. So you see that since, uh, it, it's not apparent here, but uh, since uh, this definition here actually involves only the uh, invertible sheaf associated with D, in other words, it does not depend on the uh, linear equivalence class of D, this is a weaker uh, notion. <laughs> okay, so what I mean is that linear equivalence implies numerical equivalence. Are we assuming uh, algebraic closure in that definition of the group? No, because you can give the definition, uh, that's maybe wha what I should have done because <laughs> it attracted too many questions. Uh, uh, no, everything, uh, it's just the definition of the degree is simpler when the uh, base field is algebraically closed, but you don't need this. Okay, well, uh, this is usually not equivalent, but this is, uh, this is the converse is true uh, if X is a curve. No, it's not true. Why do I say that? Okay, and uh, so there's a new uh, group associated with this, the group of Cauchy divisors uh, modulo uh, numerical equivalence, and it's called the ne uh, neron severi group. So this is by definition the group of uh, Cartier divisors. <coughs> Modulo uh, numerical equivalence. And uh, so why is it an important group? So it's a quotient of the Picard group. It's because of the uh, following theorem, which is not uh, a triviality. Let's say that, uh, so it says the following, that if X is a proper variety, or let's say pro uh, yeah, proper over, over a field, then this group here is free abelian of finite rank. I'm free abelian is always true, but this rank is called the Picard number of X. So the Picard number is the rank of the neuron savory group. It's a bit illogical, but So I have uh, maybe two minutes. Mm. So let me uh, try to, oh, uh, something I should mention also is that uh, all these things here uh, make sense with uh, uh, Q divisors, okay? If you have uh, uh, Q Cartier Q, Q divisors, you can uh, define this uh, numerical equivalence by, so you say that in general, This is equivalent. So when m is any non-zero integer, you have this. This is because these numbers are just uh, integers, okay? So they're equal whenever m times one is equal to m times the other, okay? And using, using this, you can define numerical equivalence uh, for Q Cartier, uh, Q divisors. Okay. And in particular, uh, you can, uh, if you look, at the uh, tensor product of this uh, group here with Q, it will be the uh, set of e equivalence classes of uh, Q Cartier Q divisors. Okay, so let me uh, finish with uh, uh, a couple of examples.
So uh, if uh, x is a curve, then it's not uh, difficult to see that. Uh, so you have p of x. This is always true, this arrow here. Okay, it's just because of this uh, definition here. And for a curve, this neural slavery group is actually isomorph uh, is isomorphic to z by uh, the degree. Okay. Another uh, example is uh, when x is the projective space. And uh, so in that case, it's actually not that interesting. <coughs> There's nothing new. Numerical equivalence is uh, uh, equivalent to linear equivalence. Okay, so we have this. And this is the given by the uh, previous degree. I think I wanted to do uh, the blow up of a point, mayb but maybe I'll do that uh, next time because I don't want to be uh, too much over time. Okay, I'll stop here. Thank you.